Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, I'm going to teach an absolute beginner's lesson on fusion nodes in DaVinci Resolve. Before we get started, please do me a favor and like this video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future Resolve tutorials. Fusion in DaVinci Resolve uses what is essentially a flowchart called a node tree that visually maps out how effects are connected and work together. The flowchart outlines the steps that are required to accomplish something, and nodes are like the building blocks that make up that flowchart. Different nodes do different things, and basically you can break them down into four types. The first type of node is a generator node. Generator nodes generate something like an image, a background, or a text. The second type of node is a merge node. Merge nodes connect other nodes to a line in the flowchart. The third type of node is a mask node. A mask node sets the alpha channel for another node, essentially determining what's transparent in that node and what's not. Finally, the fourth type of node is an effect node. An effect node basically works to affect other nodes. For example, a transform node changes the position and scale of another node. The color correction node adjusts the color of another node. A drop shadow node adds a drop shadow to another node. That's just to name a few. Believe it or not, there are over 370 total nodes available on the Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve. To create a new Fusion composition, while on the Edit page, click on the Effects button. Then select Fusion Composition and drag it down to the editor timeline. As long as your playhead is covering this composition, if you go over to the Fusion page, it will be there. If there's more than one clip highlighted by the playhead on the edit page, simply right click on the Fusion Composition you want to open and select Open in Fusion Page. In the Fusion page, to reset the user interface, simply select Workspace, Reset UI Layout. To choose from a list of layout presets, select Workspace, Layout Presets, Fusion Presets, then pick one of your choice. I'd suggest familiarizing yourself with these presets so you can use them to the maximum benefit. Before we start talking about the Node panel, let me just quickly highlight the Viewer panel. Currently, there are two Viewer windows, one on the left and one on the right. This is called Dual Viewer Mode. You can switch to single viewer mode by clicking on the viewer button. You can switch back by clicking on it again. For now, I'm going to leave it in dual mode and you'll see why in a minute. You'll notice that there is a single node here called Media Out 1. This node represents what will be outputted to the Fusion Composition clip on the edit page. You can select any node by clicking on it or by drawing a box around it. Notice now that I've selected it, it's highlighted in red, and the Inspector tab is now showing the properties of that node. You can control the properties of any selected node here. The most commonly used nodes can be found here. Let's add one of the generator nodes. The node I'll drag down is a background node. By hitting the Delete key, I can delete it. I can also place this node into the node panel by simply left-clicking on it. Notice that when I hover my mouse over its button, down here it tells you what this node does. In this case, it creates a four-point gradient frame. The properties of this node, as shown in the Inspector panel, are different than the properties of the Media Out node. I'll come back to that in a second. But first, let's talk about these little triangles and squares that are on the sides. These are node connectors, which means they are how nodes connect to one another. Their shapes are important. Triangle node connectors are input connectors. That means Fusion expects something to plug into that connector that is providing information. The square node connectors are output connectors. That means that Fusion is expecting this connector to plug into an input connector of another node to provide its information to it. I'm now going to plug the background one node's output connector into the media out one node's input connector. To do this, I'll click on the square and drag it over to this triangle. When I let it go, you can see that the right viewer has turned black. That's because the background one node is set to black. 
If I change the color of that in the inspector panel, then you can see it update in the right viewer in real time. Let's look at a couple of other properties that are available in the background one node. If I select this dropdown, you can see that I have several choices, including that four corner gradient that was mentioned previously. If I change some of the colors, you can see what I mean. Let's go ahead and leave this as a plain solid color, and I'll change it back to black for now. Notice that there is also a transparency slider here. This controls the transparency of the node. For now, I'll leave it. Now it's time to add another node. By clicking off the background one node, I'll make sure that nothing is selected. Now if I hover over this button, you can see it's a text node. If I click on it, it appears in the node panel, but it's not actually connected to anything. In the inspector panel, you can see that I now have a whole bunch of properties that can be adjusted. Let me start by typing some text into the text box. Now that I've done that, why hasn't it appeared in the right viewer window? That's because it's not connected to the media out one node, and that's what's currently being displayed there. The viewer windows allow you to see any node in its current state. To utilize these, with a node selected, hit the 1 key to show it in the left viewer window, or hit the 2 key to show it in the right viewer window. Let me select the media out 1 node and hit the 2 key again. Now the left window is showing the text 1 node, and the right window is showing the media out 1 node. I want to connect the text 1 node into this path in the node tree. Previously, I mentioned there was a specific type of node that allows you to do that. It's called a merge node. It can be found here. With nothing selected in the node panel, I'll click on the merge node button, and you can see that it's populated into the node panel. Now I just need to hook them up. I'll start by placing the merge one node in between the background one and the media out one nodes. Now I'll drag from this square to that triangle and from this square to that triangle. Lastly, to merge the text into the path, I'll drag from this square into this triangle. Now you can see that the text has been successfully merged into the media out one, and this is reflected on the edit page. I'm going to disconnect these and show a quicker way to do that. If I have the merge one node selected and I hold down the shift key, I can drag it between the other two nodes and it will automatically insert it into the path. How cool is that? Now I'm going to delete both the text and merge nodes and show an even faster way. By drawing a box around both of them, I can hit the delete key. Now check this out. If I first select the background node, I can simply click on the text button and poof, the text one as well as the merge one nodes have been added. How about that? With the text node selected, I can retype my text. Because it's merged into the path, it automatically updates in the right viewer window. Previously, I mentioned a mask node. This node sets the alpha channel for another node, essentially determining what's transparent and what is not. Let's add one of these now. These are the most commonly used masks. I'm going to drag this rectangle mask onto the node panel. Then I'll drag a line from its output connector into the background one node. You can see right away in the right viewer window that it's masked the background. With the rectangle one node still selected, I'll hit the one key on my keyboard to bring it up in the left viewer window. As you can see, the white represents full opaque and the black represents full transparent. If I come over to the inspector tab and adjust the soft edge slider, you can see some grays being introduced on the edges. This is essentially a feathering property. Returning that back to zero, I can adjust other properties such as the corner radius and width and height. Selecting the background one node, I can change the color to something like pink. Selecting the text one node, I can change its color as well. Maybe under shading, I'll add a red outline and maybe a drop shadow also. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of referring to these nodes as rectangle one, background one, and text one, and so on. So let's change the names. All you have to do is right click on a node and select rename. 
then click OK. With the node selected, you can also simply hit the F2 key, type in the new name, and hit Enter. Super fast. We already talked about the shapes of these node connectors, but did you notice that while the output connectors are all gray, the input connectors are either yellow, green, or blue? Now's a good time to talk about that. These colors tell what input types they are made to receive. The blue input receives alpha channel, aka transparency, information. So this blue line coming out of the mask node is feeding transparency information into the background node. But what are the other two colors? The yellow input represents the background, and the green input represents the foreground. So right now, like and subscribe is plugged into the foreground input, which is green and therefore shows up on top. The background node is plugged into the background input, which is yellow. What if I wanted to switch those? Well, that's easy. With the merge node selected, hit Control T on your PC or Command T on your Mac, and the switch will be made. You'll notice that the like and subscribe has disappeared. That's because it's now behind the background. And if I move the background's mask, you can see it back there. Also, when you're dragging a line connecting one node to another, you can right click or alt and left click and drag to see a list of input types to choose from. So at this point, I've covered three of the four basic node types. So now let's talk about effect nodes. Remember that an effect node basically works to affect another node. One example I gave was a transform node. A transform node transforms other nodes in the viewer window. I'm going to start by selecting the like and subscribe node. Then I'll click on the transform node button, which is here. See how it inserted that transform node in between the like and subscribe and its merge node? If I adjust some of the properties in the inspector panel, you can see how it affects the like and subscribe text. If I hold my shift key down and then move the transform node between the background and the merge nodes, then it only affects the background. That's because it's in the flowchart before the merge node and therefore doesn't affect the nodes after it. What do you think will happen if I shift hold and move it to between the merge node and the media out node? Now when I adjust the properties, it affects everything because everything is in front of it. We're almost done. Let's add one more effect node. This time I want to add a drop shadow to the background. Remember that the text node has a drop shadow option to do that right in the inspector panel, but the background node does not. The good news is that there's a drop shadow node. The bad news is that it's not one of these listed here, so we'll have to go searching for it. The shortcut to search nodes is shift space. This will bring up the entire list of over 370 nodes to choose from. If I type drop shadow in the search bar, there it is. By clicking on add, it will automatically be added to the node path. It actually added it behind the transform node because that's what I had selected. And you can see that in the right viewer window. If I wanted to affect only the background, then all I have to do is hold the shift key down and drag it over like this. Of course, it would have been better if I had just selected the background node in the first place. Lastly, I'd like to cover a couple of miscellaneous things that are important to know. Middle clicking allows you to move the node panel around. By left and middle clicking together, you can zoom in and out by moving the mouse side to side. You can also hold down the control key or command on a Mac and zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. On the edit page, alt click and drag duplicates a fusion clip that can be changed inside fusion. What I haven't covered in this video is keyframing. Keyframing in fusion is a powerful tool that allows you to dynamically change the properties of your nodes over time. I'll be making a tutorial for that soon. So if you're watching this after I've done that, then I'll place a link right here and you can go and watch it now. 
Otherwise, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss it when it does come out. Until next time, thanks for watching.